So, you know, we are software defined storage for all your virtualization workloads, right? This is, we're to custom built to handle virtual environments. We're not the, the storage that everybody else is that has a checkbox for everything. We're not a Swiss army knife of storage, right? The, that, you know, can, can, can do everything. We do one thing and we do it really damn well, which is support your virtualized workloads. And the reason we did this is because we believe that um, best of breed purpose built tools are better than, uh, you know, a, you know, a Swiss army knife that can do everything. If you've ever tried to build a house with a Swiss army knife, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. All right. So storage needs to evolve. You know, in the past physical data center, we have a physical server, right? As we can yeah. see here, and it's usually one application on the server. And we've got storage that is tailored to that specific application, to the needs of that workload. <clears throat> and this is finding good. You understand what the workload is, and you tune that storage to what's appropriate for it. And as we move forward into virtualize, you know, we have lots of servers, but the backend storage is now, uh, you know, this, this pool. And it's, it's now gone from being optimized for workload to being optimized for an aggregate load, right? And so the problem with that is now it's, it just kind of averages and it gets even worse than that because what used to be one physical server is now a host that has 20, 30, 50, 100 virtual machines inside of it. And every one of those virtual machines is not getting its own storage custom tuned and tailored for it like it did on the left of this uh, back in the day when it was physical data center. And we end up sharing this storage <clears throat> and what we call the IO blender effect where the, the, the different size of workloads from all the different virtual machines kind of come in as a blur to the storage. They know it came from a certain host, but they don't know which that IO actually talks to, belongs to different machines, virtual machines inside. But as a result, it just serves it at the order it got it, which means that one machine might be waiting for, uh, you know, might put a few IOs through and then wait a very long time while others are serviced until it finally gets serviced again. And it's sort of best effort across the board. And to an application, if part of the IO gets served and you're waiting for the other part, the application itself <clears throat> won't accept any of it until it gets the entire thing. So until it gets that full load, <clears throat> then uh, it, it's hanging, it's waiting. So on a storage side, you, you might see some fast storage with some low latencies, but on an application side, there's a lot of delays because the order that things are coming back aren't optimal for each. So Tintree set out to solve this. And, and it, so now enter the you know, virtualized data center with Tintree, and what we've got is storage that's VM aware. And what we've got is these applications in these VMs, and we've gone and we've created uh, lanes for every one of them. And so now we have the benefit of the, the first one, which was, you know, in the old physical days where we've custom tuned all the storage for each application, we get that benefit without having to go and manually map anything. We just lump it all in together and the system automatically figures out which, which virtual disks and which IO belongs to which VMs, groups them together into their own lanes so uh, we can get this visibility across the board. To expand on that further, further we can uh, guarantee that performance by providing these isolations. So this isolation will give us a very predictable experience for all of our, uh, all of our VMs. Every one of these VMs is getting sub millisecond latency. And in the event they're not, we've got a lot of tools to help with that. And if you add a new app to this, nothing you have to do. Our system automatically adjusts itself to, to give more resources or less resources to any new workloads you add, you get rid of workloads. We can reallocate that resource elsewhere. We can grow the resource on demand if it's a busier workload and shrink it if it's not so that we can make it fair and optimize the whole. Uh, so software defined storage for all your virtual, virtual workloads. So even though earlier on I said that we were custom tailored and very specific to only one use case, which is virtualization. That virtualization use case is very broad. Inside of it, you can put all kinds of applications in your VMs, from Oracle, Exchange, SQL. You can have 
VDI in there, right? Some some VMware View for VDI. You can run your DevOps out of there, Ansible, Chef, Puppet, right? All of this you can lump together, take advantage of all of this together without having any additional uh, knowledge on your team, without having experts that are mapping these one-to-one -one and adjusting storage as you go. So we get this VMware, VM aware resource allocation and everything is policy management based on what you want to do at a per VM level, which is the level you care about. So an example of this complete visibility, this is a list, uh, this is a, a screenshot from one of our UIs. Here's virtual machines. I can see a list of virtual machines. Every single virtual machine that's on this box has its own performance history going back seven days. It will show you the IO and the throughput and the latency. And the latency in this case, um, in this example, we're seeing that green. So that green looks like a storage problem to the application. The sum of all of that latency looks like it to the application. And in this case, we got peaks somewhere in the seven millisecond range. And it would look like uh, that's a and through a on for the network, and then it's actually a host issue. So uh, in this case, the, you know the host might be oversubscribed. Too many VMs on a host, none of CPU. They can't get the I/O they need. Looks like a storage problem. It actually isn't. And teams will spend a long time uh, pointing fingers at one another and saying, no, it's the network, no, it's the storage, back and forth, it's the application. So this gets you right down to the, the core of what that problem is. You can go resolve it. Not only can we do that in real time and looking back at shorter histories, we can look back three years using our Tintree Analytics and give you tools to let you trend your entire environment so you can see the growth. And not only can see the growth across um, <clears throat> we can see growth not only for uh, the aggregate of your entire environment, but we can go right down to that per VM level or groups of applications. We can model what if scenarios to help with your planning so that as you grow your environment, there's no surprises to you and you can do it in a happy, harmonious way. So in, in you know, some of the use cases might be to spin up a, a test environment and we can spin up, you know, thousands of VMs in minutes and tear them down, uh, you know, just as quick. And, and you know, how do, we, how do we do this? Well, we have RESTful APIs implemented at the right level of abstraction. That means that the object you care about, a specific VM, can be called for what it is. We can ask for a clone. It's offloaded, presented itself. It's the fastest cloning in the industry. And within seconds, you've got that, uh, a complete copy of that VM, regardless of how big it is. And to go a little further on, on some of the ways that we can automate this and why this is so useful is on the left of this is an example of a, an automation workflow and orchestration workflow for something as simple as protecting a VM. So we want to replicate the VM and, and then we want an end state that says it's protected. And so on the Tintree side of things on the right, we're going to say, hey, we want to replicate this VM. We're going to define a schedule and that's it. Now on the left, is another storage vendor's walkthrough, and we have to define a schedule. We've got to look for a LUN with a matching schedule. Does the LUN have free space? Do we get to determine the storage config? Is there enough disk space on the LUN now that we've determined the right LUN? Then we've got to reserve the space for those snapshots. Is there still enough on the LUN? Yes, no. And you can see it goes on and on and on just to do the same thing. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, you can't automate this and get from A to B, uh, with both scenarios. This is completely opaque to the end user, but if you're the one who's writing this and has to support it, which would you rather do? One that's as simple as telling it what you want to do and it happens, or having to define it at this layer. And so all of the extra uh, complications of this automation is going to make it clunky for you to grow and, and get all that cloud elasticity that, uh, that has become so popular today. So, uh, you know, this Tintree was built for automation. It was from, from day one in inception, we've had REST APIs from the very beginning, and we've had REST APIs at the layer that matters most, which is the uh, virtual machine, the, that object inside that we care about. So having done that, we can combine that. For, uh, we can put a self-service front end. Now that can be 
VRA, like a VMware uh, vRealize automation, be Cloud Director, it could be Cloud Bolt, it could be Slack, it could be Alexa. It really doesn't matter. You can build your own portal. But all of this can happen easier because that portal doesn't need to have lots of logic just to do the simple of, of tasks like asking for a VM, replicating one, which store should go on. It all looks like one pool, so we don't have to deal with a lot of this. Uh, orchestration automation, we've got plugins for all kinds of uh, you know, uh, players in the ecosystem. We've got Power CLI, we've got v Realize uh, Orchestrator, UCS Director, lots of tools here. Management, we support VMware, Hyper-V, Red Hat. Wait, did you say it's a VMUG event? Okay, we've got VMware and we've got some others. And all of this is built on top of having the compute of your choice, network of your choice, and then to entry for the storage side. And the storage is by far going to be the easiest one to manage in this whole mix. Um, and this, uh, this nice, simple framework is how you can build anything you want and give you max flexibility. Okay. We've got, uh, we can scale very seamlessly on any one of these boxes. So you can start smaller and we can do drive by drive expansion and you can get that space instantly. We've taken all the reserves right up front and then you need even more than just one system. We've got scale out so we can man manage and monitor up to 64 VM stores inside of Tintry Global Center. And what we'll do is very intelligently figure out which VMs are the right candidates to move around to guarantee an optimal health for your entire system. So if we see that one of them is, is taking a lot of space, including its snapshots, and it really has low I.O., um, but there's another box in your environment that, uh, you know, there's a lot of I.O. on it, but there's a lot of space as well, well, it would make sense to move that VM to it because it's really not going to contribute to the I.O., but it needs the space. So this is the some of the logic we use for this, so you can just kind of set it and forget it into a very, very massive scale. So um, if we're looking at our, our model lineup, um, come talk to me afterwards. Uh, up at the top, the first four there are all flash models. And we've got our flash first hybrid models, the T885 and 850. Uh, and then we've also got a really small entry level box called the T1000. Uh, as you can see, these are uh, tuned for a, a max number of VMs. Now I'm not saying you're gonna get this number of VMs. Uh, this is a, an absolute top end for you know what's being tested, what the uh, what the you know uh, management framework and everything can support, um, but you know ultimately you're going to run out of performance or capacity. We're going to make sure that you utilize all of that very efficiently, and uh, we're going to let you know when you are running out of those resources with some very simple gauges on the front that give you uh, you know a, a gas gauge that says you know performance is on a percentage and capacity on a percentage, and as long as you still got free space, keep deploying those VMs to it. Now, here's just some example use cases of some customers. Um, you know, this is, you know, 70% reduced SAP reporting time, you know, down from 30 to nine minutes. And we've got another one here, Purely Cow, there's 95% uh, less time managing storage, uh, more time with their customers. And here's a quote from, Tintree's performance allows us to compete and win against AWS, Azure, and large public cloud providers. Uh, we've got Marine Corps, Love us, eight minutes per desktop. And that's end to end from when it's asked for to completely provisioned into their IT system and they have it. Dropbox. Now, they, they spin up and tear down a thousand VMs every 15 minutes testing their software. And we were able to cut their development cycles in half to um, give it, you know, using when they, since they leveraged our technology. So those are a few examples. Uh, I want to, um, just one last one here, Autodesk, we've got over 200,000 VMs running in a steady state uh, across uh, many, many hundreds of hypervisors. There's, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of workloads in here. And what we've done is help them to, to shift to a software as a service business model so they could pr uh, provide their cloud offering and not have to, uh, you know, uh, let the constraints of traditional slow storage slow them down. So, uh, you know, I just want to thank you for your time. Those are some use cases examples. I invite you to, to give us a try, find out for yourself, and hopefully we can put you on the next slide of what that might be.